<laughs> All right, we are live. Thank you everybody for joining a Stubana sponsored webinar. We have two incredible guests joining us today. We're gonna keep it really informal, but we wanna keep it extremely valuable as always. So what we're gonna do today, first we're gonna introduce the guests. We have a, uh, a poll question that's available for those that are joining. And then all of our guests and everyone joining today are gonna be active in the chat to make sure no questions go unanswered. Uh, so Will, Rolando, do you guys just please briefly share your background and your experience, that'd be awesome. All right. You want me I to guess go, you go, for, you, go, go, Rolando. Or go, Rolando. You go first. Well, uh, my name is Rolando Rosas, and I am one of the founders over at uh, Global Tech Worldwide. Uh, been doing e-commerce since 2002, and since that time, the world has changed. Right? Uh, Amazon is into everything, and so uh, we're also uh, an e-commerce um, play for businesses that need cancer communications, uh, and that's kind of our specialty, and we're in several markets around the world. And these two gentlemen are, are people that I know and have worked uh, on previous projects and some on current projects, so we have a lot to chat about today. Love awesome, it. thanks, Rolando. And uh, where are you tuning in from? I am uh, just outside of Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. Great. Love it, love it. All right, Will. So Will Christensen here from Data Automation. Um, we're what you would call a systems integrator uh, with a little bit of a flavor of SaaS there. So we provide custom integrations and automations um, at, a, at a SaaS based price. So we're able to offer some really amazing um, custom code level quality uh, at SaaS based prices. So and, and we I'm so excited to be here. I honestly two of my favorite people here and uh, <laughs> We, we've done I didn't pay you for serious, that, did we? No, we, we've done some serious automation with Skubana um, and, uh, and Global Tech's a poster child for, for automation. So it's, it's a, good, a good time to be here. For sure. Now, before we dive into that, I'm gonna be, we're, we're just winging it. We're freestyling. We're spitballing today. So again, <laughs> if people have questions in the chat, please feel free. But there's no planted questions today. So before we get into the professional side, what's a part of your life that you've been able to automate? Or what's, what's a software that, that you're leveraging in your personal life right now that you can recommend as a valuable nugget to those that are dialing in? Uh, I'm Go gonna ahead, throw boy. out, uh, I'm gonna throw out, so I automate all sorts of stupid stuff. Like it's just in my nature to get in and automate. Um, seeing some, some, some uh, current clients on the call, excited that they're here as, as well. Um, so, so automation is kind of in my blood. Um, I automate a lot using, um, Alexa. Um, you can do it with Google home as well, but if you haven't messed around with the IFTT, uh, connections between there. So like we actually had it to the point where you could say Alexa trigger Alex home. Alex is my daughter. And it would actually shoot off a text message wherever she was over it. Like, you know, like, like in, asking the, the mom at the friend's house to, to bring her home. That's an extreme case of like, I automate everything. A more relevant case, I would say clipboard managers. If you are not using a clipboard manager right now, go out, Google it, download it. It'll change your life. It'll save you five to 10 minutes a day. Um, clipboard so, managers. Sorry, right, we're just going to have to dive in. Let me double click into that for a second. What is that? <laughs> click, click. Okay, so a clipboard manager is a tool that allows you to not have to go back and click again. And so, so you know what? Okay, we've all been inside Scubana or, or whatever platform we're using in there, but we only use Scubana because we're talking about that on this call. So, so um, you know, w when we go in there, we've all been in there and we've clicked on that order number and it puts it in our clipboard. Well, what happens if you want to if you want to copy five or six order numbers at the same time? Well, you go copy and back and copy and back and copy it. Not anymore. Clipboard managers allow you to copy all five things, go back to your email, and you have those in a clipboard history. So you go click, 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 and all five of those, those things that you clicked are saved. So you don't have to flip back and forth between two different tabs all day long, every day. So tracking information, order information, anytime you are copying and pasting information, clipboard manager. It all is right, cheating. I like that. That's a great, it is that's cheating. A great <laughs> It is cheating. All right, Rolando. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm in I'm in email all day long. I don't know how people you know people manage email, but it's it's always some somebody told me years ago when I started um, 
when I started working professionally, I said, you're never going to manage, you're never going to always finish email, but you can always try to manage the flow of email and how you work on it. And that always stuck with me. Uh, and one of the tricks that I've done that's really helpful, and I've got all of the folks that work at Global Tech doing this as well, is in inbox, you can set up templates to basically stick in information that you're always, you know, repetitively using or whether it's something you're going to fire off to people or or responses, it cuts down the amount of time you're actually spending on email. So I've got all sorts of little snippets and templates that you just click from and, I, and we're a G Suite house. So we are big into the, the G Suite stuff. So in the inbox, if you happen to use Gmail or G Suite, you could set up shortcuts or templates so that you can have responses ready for uh, the most frequent. If you took a look at the most frequent things that you use uh, every day, I have about 20 of them, and then it's just it's just one click, bleep, and it inserts the information, and then I may add a part number or 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 a hello or whatever into that message, and on its way it goes, and I don't have to spend time. By the way, and if you have a Mac, there is a really cool um, voice detect voice detect dictation, if I can say that, a voice dictation feature that not a lot of people use or know that it's in the Mac. If you're really writing a lot of email, it's so much quicker to use your voice and just talk. And Mac does a really good job of picking up those words and putting them on email or other apps that you're using. So those are the two things that I, I are my go-to things on a, from a personal basis. Yeah, I, I, by the way, I, I love Google Docs. They have a great transcription tool there with Google Voice, and you can just speed into it, and it is so accurate. It's probably the most accurate one that I've seen to date. Really? Just a nice powerful. little little hack. Yeah, it's super yeah. powerful. All right, so that's on the personal side. I wanted to get that out there, surprise everybody with the question, but now let's get into the e-commerce side. I, in my heart of heart, do believe that in order to win right now, in 2020 and 2021 in e-commerce, you need to be automating. And I believe that a technical stack, the software that you're using in your business is a competitive advantage. Heck yeah. Agree or, agree or disagree? Oh, wholeheartedly 150%. Yeah. So that leads me to ask my next question is like, what, I guess, what aspects are you automating? How do you figure out what to automate? And is there softwares outside of Subana? We all know the value that Subana is adding in terms of automating purchase orders and profitability and order bots and all that stuff. But I want to get into the weeds. I want to know, I mean, Rolando specifically on the brand side and the retail side, what are you doing on the automation side? What what are some valuable nuggets you can share with those that are dialing in today? Well, I, I think, I don't know, Will, we're up for maybe 40 different automations and counting, right? We've got some yeah. piled up in the roadmap for this year as well as next year. But basically, here's the equation. Um, two really important things that you really need to know. First, are you doing this or somebody else doing these tasks over and over and over again? If they're repetitive in nature, those would be the first layer of things you would want to consider. The next piece is then time. Is this something that you're spending five minutes a day, um, 15 hours a week, 40 hours a week? The more time spent on that, uh, uh, coupled with the first part, then makes it a really good candidate to be uh, automating. Because a lot of times you'll find it's data entry, it's responses, uh, and then you start getting into the higher levels. If I, this happens, and I want this action to happen. And then maybe a fourth thing, combine all of these things and spit that back out. But that's more advanced. But the first two are the first basic things that you have to have on the table in order to know if it's a good candidate or a good process to automate. I let me I wanna I wanna I wanna share a a tool that so so data automation started four years ago. And so we have been asked that same question hundreds of times. How do I decide what should be automated next? Where do I go with this? And so we've actually developed a litmus test that I'll share with you. This is, a, it, this is something that I've shared in, in many different uh, forums, 15.1.1, okay? And I actually added a five to the end of that. So 15.1.1.5, okay? 15 minutes a day, an hour a week, or an hour a month. If you are spending more than that on this task, it probably needs to be automated, okay? Now the five at the end is that you need to do that task five times manually 
before you consider automation. If you begin to automate before that fifth time that you do it manually, you will run into errors. And, and Rolando and I have been around this block long enough that we've tried a couple of things and we didn't know whether to turn left or right. We tried to automate before it was time to automate. So five times manually, 15, one, one. That I make a list, like get out a sticky note, slap it on your desk and start making a list of those things that are happening to you. And then once you've gotten through it five times, you can start to really calculate its impact on the business. Because if you go and say, like, like let's say it's, re it's responding to an email, if that email happens a lot inside your business, you can put a, a multiplier on that and then it's across the entire company. So 15 one, yeah. one. No, The hardest part of that is just having the consciousness and the self-awareness that you are doing those tasks. Because if you're yep, nibbling right. on those tasks, it's likely that you maybe are getting some satisfaction from it to a degree, right? It's like, kind of like snacking, right? It's not yep. really great for you. You should be eating three times a day unless you're doing a... Uh, uh, getting your body into ketosis but uh but yeah you, you get what i'm saying is like if you, it may make you feel good in the short term but not the long term well you know what so, chad if you have a team of people like if, if so i would i'm just going to take a stretch here i'm sure that a lot of folks that are tuning in may touch amazon one way or another and if you're involved in that business in any way shape or form guaranteed you have things that can be automated because there's holes there's things, stuff missing, there's data you're entering, or you have people that are actually trying to roll up information and put it into one place because it's in multiple things. All of those yep. things, uh, all of those things can be automated. And it's starting off at looking at where are your people spent, the, the more data entry, that's where I, for us, the more data entry a function or a job is. And if that data entry is a repetitive data entry of the consistent amount and the same type of information, those things can pay off. For example, we did a project, um, and actually we're just finalizing it, uh, where one of our people were spending 15 hours a week on shipping stuff to Amazon. To, it, and that took one shipment, 15 hours. We calculated that. We've got that now down to 15 minutes. So now All we right. can get we can get things to FBA <laughs> a lot quicker in one day where it took us maybe three days to put together one shipment. Um, and so those are the kind of things where, where are your people spending the time? And I think you've said this before, if you look, go through your tasks and maybe another call that we were on, where if you look at what you're doing or your people are doing, where they're putting their time or spending their time, if it's, if it's something that you can measure and give it a number, whether it's an hour, like Will, five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, an hour a day or more, then you can quantify and say, okay, that one hour of time, we pay that person $25 an hour. And that person is working one hour a day on that task. And in the course of a, of a week, that is uh, five to $125 a week. Now look at that over the course of the year. And now you start looking at the picture financially and then say, okay, that makes sense. What if we could reduce that time from one hour to 10 minutes? So there's some stuff, Rolando, I know I, you've showed me some stuff. You have automation in Stubana that you've built with Will, mm -hmm. and then you have outside automation. And I wanna get to both. Yes. So if you're looking at Stubana, and let's just say Stubana is the, the G class of Mercedes, of, of the yes. inventory management software is out there. You then have the put Ferrari, some- Ferrari, man. Forget G class, they're Ferrari. Okay. So, Ferrari all right, all right, all right. So, so the Ferrari of inventory management, order management softwares, you have thrown some awesome ass gold-plated hubcaps on that bad boy, right? And you've got some mm -hmm. hydraulics too. So you have souped yeah, it up hydraulic, in a hydraulic 22 inch rims. You've souped it up. And I wanna know what, like, what are some of the things you've souped up because Obviously, having an operations platform that's nimble and agile, like we talked about, one that's open, that has an open API, is more than ever important mm -hmm. right now to win. But I need to know specifically, what are some things that you've, that you, what, what are those hydraulics that you've put on this bad boy? What, what have you done? So the, the first thing, which for us was a game changer, was taking a, uh, and, and one of my favorite things that, that Will has done on, on the Scubana side for us, is to, to take a Chrome app, is it, am I saying it, or a plugin? Chrome and extension. A Chrome extension, thank you, Will. And on that Chrome extension, I have all the data I need 
or my person, whoever's working, or one of our other uh, folks that's working in Sivana has in order to make a decision. They can look at inventory, they can look at how much that inventory cost, and, and they can look at the quantities as well as things that if they're in transit or coming in to the different suppliers that we have connected. Now in Skibana today, if you don't have that, you gotta go from the order screen to the inventory screen and maybe have a couple of different tabs open. This condenses information that's in probably four different places all on one page. So now my person's more efficient because they're not jumping around between tabs. They're on one screen. Interesting. I'm going to so need to see it. that after the call. I'm going to need to see that after the call. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So that's totally. the, so that's the first tough. thing you started to crack away at, right? So the uh, less amount of clicks. Less amount of clicks. Everything's there. So we spend less. Not that we don't love Skibana. We love it. But we would love to spend less time managing so we can look at the data mm -hmm. and make a decision on the data rather than inputting and looking at data, right? So that's in Skibana. Yeah. The other thing that... Uh, is a larger picture that's that's been you know several years now that that Will and his team has worked on uh, is connecting all of our suppliers. So all of our orders, Walmart, Amazon, eBay, our own website, orders from outside the U.S. all flow into Skibana, and uh, those uh, those orders then get sent to the appropriate uh, distributor or warehouse if they're in the U.S., if they're in the U.K., if they're in Germany, and a lot of that's now flowing automatically. So making that happen so that as COVID hit, we went, our, our business went from 15% growth to 85% growth. Without having something like this in place, you'd have been crushed. You, you'd have been like, oh, I love this extra business, but what am I going to do? I've got way more orders than I know what to do with. And we were able to experience a little bit of that. And we were able to make some refinements and adjustments along the way, rather than wholly <laughs> uh, I, I can't do this because there's too many emails. And so we don't deal in emails. Orders come in to Skibana, Skibana spits them out. And you have a really cool thing that will add it for some of those suppliers that are not, uh, they don't have API, they don't have FTP, they're just old school suppliers. You email me the order. Instead of us emailing them, Skibana with some automations created by Will and his team spits out the email with a PO with all the information that supplier needs, including a label, by the way, which takes away another two or three steps that you would normally have to do and spits it out all on an email to that supplier or suppliers if that's the way they work. So those are some of the more cooler things that are huge time savers and are game changers for us, especially as our business has been growing. We don't need to add more bodies per se, just more refinement and nibbling at the edges. On the I, I love this. Side. Will can just sit there, kind of look, look really good right now. <laughs> sit back and out. But, but you know, so, I, I would, let me put it to this way. You said the Ferrari with the- Hey, I didn't pay him out. to say any I of would, this, by the way. There was no, <laughs> like, there, there was no backyard dealing. Like, it was nothing No, like <laughs> no none. It, I would put it this way. If for those that are sports, if you're, I played football in college, so I would say uh, um, Scubana is that, MVP type quarterback, right? But if you don't surround them with a team, with players that are good, it doesn't matter. That MVP quarterback ain't going to the Super Bowl. You need a team. So you need a complementary software to that MVP quarterback, which in this case would be Skibana. So we give them a running back. We give them a great wide receiver. We give them Randy Moss. We give them, you know, Emmett Smith. Pick your, pick your uh, player that you want to use on defense yep. and all that stuff. And that gives you a rounded solution because there is nothing. I'm not aware of somebody tell me or on the chat, you've got one solution that does everything. I want to see it. I want to buy it actually. Cause I want to have I, it and make money. I don't want to buy it. <laughs> I, I have yet to see any software that can handle every single thing that's out there. I mean, it's, mm, it's, I haven't. It, it, you, you have to niche down and figure out exactly what's there. That's, that's where integration becomes so important. I mean, I, I, that, that may sound like I'm trying to toot my own horn there, but, but really like you have to find softwares that want to be great at what they're what they're good at, and and that's one of the things Skibana does amazing. The, the tagging system, the ability to to handle custom workflows, the different things the that are in there. It's the rules. It's powerful, really, really powerful. And then you take you you attach an open API onto that, and then you know connect it in there. It's it's really really solid solid material for building. Well, I definitely things. want to start. I want to get into the API. There ha there are some questions that I want to make sure we're responding to. 
So, okay. so, in, so just on the Chrome side alone, it says, can we buy or gain access to the Chrome extension? Uh, Add on Rolando mentioned. Yep, absolutely. As of right now, that Chrome extension has been in kind of a, a beta mode and, and um, it's been being used by a couple of Skubana clients. Um, and we'll make sure that it gets added to the show notes and everything once it's um, out of beta. If you're interested in participating in the beta, um, you know, reach out to us um, on our website and, and ask about it. Absolutely possible. That's why I love having these webinars because I discover things like I had no idea someone had built a Chrome extension to Skubana, and I'm <laughs> super curious about it. Um, and that's the beautiful thing about having an open API. So the next question came in uh, from Jenna. She says, is there, well, there's a lot here. Uh, is it possible to automate order processing in Shopify that is using Amazon multi-channel fulfillment? I do know that Skubana has a lot of that functionality with order bots where you can create if then statements that say, if it came in on this channel, say Shopify, then we want to have Amazon fulfill it with this FBA SKU in mind. Uh, of course, you can whatever you can do in Skubana, you can also do through our API, which Will is is definitely more comfortable speaking on. Yeah, no, I, I, that API has got. I mean, there are some pieces of it that 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 aren't possible, but for the most part, anything you can do in the UX UI, you can do in the API. And if you can't do it in the UX UI, there might be a Chrome extension that can help you out with that. So it, it's you you name it, we can probably automate it. And then Jenna also asked a piggyback: Is there a way to automate Amazon Seller Central dropship orders? The answer is definitely yes. A hundred percent. You can definitely reach out to Rolando or Will post call to discuss more about it. Dropshipping. Uh, it, I, we we need to know. Skubana has some some features right out of the box. If somebody's in here and they, they're not familiar with it, what Skubana's got right out of the box, the FTP solution in Skubana is actually really powerful. There are some situations that it, it can't get over, but but. For the most part, if your if your dropshipper or your supplier handles that, it'll pull in inventory, it'll push out orders, it'll pull in tracking information. So so we can't we can't detract from the tool that's already built there. It's it's really powerful. And then you add that layer of the API on top, and we can handle anything to anyone. So I mean, it, it's automating dropshipping or three PL orders. Not let's not forget three PL. Totally possible to take that inventory, push it where pull it in where it needs to go, push it out where it needs to go. Orders and tracking, same way. And I would so, just want to so, add something so, that, yeah, that that's going to be more relevant. Um, I'm sure those that are working on the Amazon side probably recognize that by now, Amazon has reinstated uh, limits to their uh, to what you can ship in the FBA. So mm -hmm. for those folks that are looking two, three, four months down the road, uh, I've been listening to different people's opinion on this, it's quite possible that these types of limits are here to stay. And and you factor in the Q4 that Amazon is is forecasting themselves to have a record fourth quarter with so many people at home. The trend all year has been moving in Amazon way in terms of market share. The overall marketplace is getting bigger. Uh, they're forecasting a very large Q4. And so what happened during COVID was they couldn't get orders out on time. And if you had a 3PL or some other way to drop ship, you were still in the game. Rather with FBA, it locked you in. There's There was product that couldn't go into FBA. You couldn't get it out on time. It's definitely something to have, even if as a, as a backup plan, to have a way to get to getting product to customers outside of FBA. So, so Will, outside of automating the heck out of Rolando's business with Subana, what are other... I basically like you you've touched a lot of the Subana customers and had a massive impact on their companies uh, professionally. I'm curious what other automations have you seen or that are that you're always being asked about that you've already been there done that on. Mm -hmm. So a, a common a common thing that I see is is customer inquiry. So like let's say that you're selling in a situation where inventory is moving really really fast. Um, and the, by the time the order hits in, for some reason, it actually is out of stock. Well, in that situation, you can um, basically go in and um, create a situation where that customer gets a proactive notification saying, hey, mm -hmm. um, you know, you are actually out of stock um, and, um, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at trying to figure out where, where that goes. And so then you can build it in so it then checks in a few minutes and says, is it still out of stock? Yeah, it is, and notify that individual 
um, of where, where everything is it, going. Is that through an SMS or an email or? SMS, email, you name it. If you have the contact information, you can set it up uh, to, to go however you'd like. But but the, the specific use case that I'm talking about, we did it via email. So we, we proactively notified customers of a shortage in stock and then automatically checked to see if it was in stock and, and went back and forth. And, and we use tools all the time. Uh, Zapier is one that we should definitely mention. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Scubana has a Zapier integration that was built by Data Automation. And and that Zapier integration is a powerful way uh, to look in and see see where where that goes. So w what are some just while we're on Zapier, just like it's already in the App Store, it's already been mm -hmm. developed. If mm -hmm. people wanted to automate things with Zapier, what are flows that you've seen with Zapier that you're like are just no brainers? So uh, I'll name a couple of them that we have done for Rolando. He has a situation where he can ask for uh, a manufacturer's credit back on whatever he sells. So he gets some credit with the manufacturer when, when that goes, but he needed to generate an invoice. This is actually one of the very first projects we did for Rolando. Love it, we, love it. We hooked it up so that every new order got pushed into a, a Google spreadsheet. And then we uh, built a formula around generating um, a, a PDF so that he could then send that in. And we've actually taken that to the next level. For a while, we were having somebody do that manually. We've taken that to the next level now where we can actually automatically submit those invoices to his drop to 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 his manufacturer for him. So, so Zapier is is the link that we use for orders in that situation. Another common example I see people. Let's say that you have um, orders that you're sending to a 3PL or you're getting help with fulfillment. You can push those over to a spreadsheet and then track all of the fulfillment actions around what's going on there. And then um, you can even push tracking information back into Scubana if you wanted to. So, so I mean, you could you could have a, a spreadsheet that sits next to Scubana that helps you with your fulfillment. And will the spreadsheet? It'll tell you the tracking. Will it tell you the stage of where the shipment is? You can do that. Yes. So, so you can you can inside Scubana you have there's a there's a trigger called every new update to an order, and you basically listen to every time an order is updated, and then you update it in in, in the other side of it. So Zapier is totally capable of doing that. Sometimes. Zapier runs into a limitation or two, and, and Data Automation's built its own steps framework, its own software that that we use to augment what Zapier can't do, and, and we we build out pieces that way as well. Awesome. So not only have you had a lot of experience with Subana, I may give a little personal share. So my wife owns a yoga business, and every time a customer was waitlisted, she had to go in and personally email that customer on the wait list. Nothing to do with e-commerce at all. Yep. I'm just giving a shout out to really the work that Will did. So I was like, hey, sweetie, uh, why don't you reach out to Will at Data Automation, see if he could help. And Will developed something really quickly that allowed her to essentially automate the wait list process so she didn't have to go in an email. Now, I know it's a small thing, well, but like you said, with your 15115, it's actually a big thing because it's taking up time and your time is worth something. Well, if you look at that that specific use case with your wife, um, she had people who were showing up to the yoga class and they were on the wait list, but they didn't know they were on the wait list. So the customers mm -hmm. were pissed. They were really, really angry. And so it was this tiny little detail. It only took five minutes to send that email, but it was getting missed at times because there was so much going on. And we just basically built a tool that sits on top of MindBody, which is the CRM that she's, she's using to kind of facilitate all of that and it, and it automates the process for her. so so i mean that's what you're looking for 15 115 do it five times manually fit more than 15 minutes a day more than an hour a week or more than an hour a month and and you're looking for something that's going to happen in perpetuity right something that you you can really yeah. gain some some leverage on i call it the stub your toe factor it's kind of how we build products on my e-commerce business what are the things that just piss you off or the things where you have just agonizing pain and it's just sitting with you for a while and you're like what the hell those are the things you need to be automating. Yep, yep. Well, and, and remember, just because it's annoying, so, so you have to be careful there, Chad, because so, I've done that before, and I've totally spent like 15 hours automating something that only saved me 15 minutes, and <laughs> it's no longer happening. So I mean, now in my case, that's me sharpening my saw, right? Like I'm gonna go find other people who need that automation. And so I will spend a lot more time automating things for myself just to get better at automation. But for somebody who's not in there, if you spend five to six hours trying to automate a 15-minute task that's only going to last for the next three months, you're probably never going to go out and automate again. 
because it was so annoying and it didn't really help. So you, you, the, the annoyance factor is important, but remember, if the, the, here's where annoyance amplifies. If it's annoyance and it's going to happen every week for the rest of eternity, then you can amplify that because think about the, the mental energy that just drains into that. So yeah, it's it's a crazy thing. You have to watch it. And, and so, you know, I, I, I was, oh, was going to say there was there was there's something that uh, Will and his team created for us that not only saves time but it's also making us money. So we work with some manufacturers that will provide us essentially a rebate if we sell to a government, education, health. Uh, care any especially after COVID, a lot more of that has expanded. So if if anybody here that is on the call works with suppliers that provide you credits or anything rebates of any form, uh, that takes a lot of time to go back after the fact and then get money back. I want that money up front. So um, Will and his team were able to um, set up something within Scubana so that every order that flows over to our supplier or suppliers that have these programs running, they get the information in real time. So we don't have to go back a month later, two months later, three months later, claim the rebate or claim the credit that they would have applied because that's an education order or some healthcare order. And now nobody on in our organization needs to worry about going through invoices, sorting them, finding them, which one's a government, which one's a non-government order. And, and and then you may have some something else. It may not be government in, in your particular situation. It may be something else where um, a particular type of customer, um, you, you're being rebated or credited based on the customer profile that you're shipping products to. Mm -hmm. So uh, that those are the type of things that also not just save time, but make money because it's adding, you know, from our organization, it's adding money back to our bottom line. Got it. So now we know what needs to be automated, right? The 15115. We have an idea of what we want to automate. What is the next process? It's not just like, hey, uh, build it and they will come. Like, what happens next in your process, Will, around automation? Because now you have a list. You have a list of 10 things. Mm -hmm. What then? So after you've got that list of 10 things, the very next thing you need to do is reach out to the customer service team on each one of the software platforms that you're facing and make them, okay, so super big hack, make them a loom video of what you want to automate. I've discovered that, that these are important and they're valuable for communicating, but this is way more important and it actually can do a better job of creating. So, so do a Loom video or a Screencastify video or a Cloud App video where you're describing on the screen. This is what I'm doing manually. It's annoying. I'd really love it if you found me something to do this. And send that email out to your customer service team. So, so hit up the customer service team at Scubana and see if they, you know, they'll, they'll generally surface something like that to a higher level executive. And, and, and you can kind of see where that's going. Oh yeah, we have somebody that does that. Or I know somebody like Will or, or somebody else who's, who's already built a software that does that. So I, I, I recommend making that video and posting that out to those groups and to any mastermind groups that you're part of. Go find a Facebook group, get part of it and post that video and say, this is what I'm doing manually. Anybody seen anything like this? Because you'd be surprised how often the tool is out there and you just need to expose the problem. The second thing I do, you're gonna, this, it's gonna floor you, I Google it. I go out and I literally type into Google my problem. I'm trying to speed up my process between this and that and look around at this and that and, and, and tackle these, these and those things. When you're Googling, look at the suggestions at the very bottom of Google and see what Google is trying to tell you about what you're Googling for. Because a lot of times I find that I Google and I just have to put the right word in there. But if I look at the suggestions, they're trying to teach me how to Google it better, right? Then my last step that I start going out is I start asking three questions about the thing that I've come, up, come to automate. Where's the data now? Where does it need to go? And what needs to happen to, to it in between? If you answer those three questions in your video or off your video, you're going to find somebody who can help you automate it. So, so I, looked, I looked to find what those pieces are and, and, and what it looks like. And if you post on Fiverr, post on FreeUp, post on Upwork, and you look for help that way, you're going to find that. Now, that's different than something like data automation. Data automation is a premier partner, uh, and we understand a lot of what's going on in there. So if you if you bring that to us, you're seeing a guarantee, and there's a lot of opportunity. But I, I'm about educating, right? It's not a, it's not all about coming to me for everything that you need. 
where's the data now? Where does it need to go? What needs to happen to it in between? So if you can frame it in those three things, if you can't find it in your network or can't find it on Google, those three questions will save you a lot of money and time when you try to find a contractor to help you automate what you're trying to do. And then just what what's next though? Now that you have those questions answered, what is the next step that happens? So so after you've answered those questions and let's say so so let's say that I go to Zapier. Zapier is a great example of, of a place where you should look at the triggers, actions, and searches that are available and see, okay, well, uh, the data is in Skubana now, and I want it to go over to this 3, uh, 3PL and end up in their FTP solution. Okay, well, I go look on Zapier and see, can, can I trigger a new order? Yeah, I can. Okay, cool. Now, uh, is there any sort of filtering that hap has, has to happen to the data in between where I only want orders above a certain amount to go there? I can, I can put that filter in place. And then the last step is, okay, can I put that into an FTP folder? And if you can dig down and find that, great. If not, there's obviously tools out there that you can find that'll help you get to those. I mean, one of the things Rolando does, we have conversations all the time where he's like, okay, I found this manual process, Will, how much, he's like, I know you're gonna, I'm gonna have to go to the ATM, I'm gonna have to figure out how much this is worth. And, and we, we have this joke about going to the ATM and figuring out how much this is really worth. And and, and we, we have found multiple projects where we say that's not ROI positive for automation. And we don't right, do it. Right, we don't but, do it. But we, we just have keep... those conversations continually, go ahead. No, I was, it's, it's, that's right. Some, some, uh, we, we have, we have a supplier in Canada, for example. Uh, we, we did the math on how much time we spend and how many orders are going over. Although it's a constant every day type of thing where we're saying it, the amount of times that they're one of our smaller markets. Uh, it's just not worth right now for the automation. But what, what we did talk about was maybe instead of the full blown automation, we'll take a piece of it, uh, like updating inventory or something like that where that's coming in and that's totally ROI positive. So you may start off with a full thing. Like I want to do all these five steps. You might find up oh, that's not worth it. But my, you know, if you give me to step one, step two, three, and four is a lot less time and I can handle that. And I, I could, I could take it over from there from step two to five. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes I have a hard time like looking out of the box when it comes to just Yubana as a co-founder and CEO. And I'm, I wish there was just like a list of all the automations will that you've seen that you could that you you can implement to make people's life easier so i think that would go a really long way just put you know it's on my wish list can i jump we, in in there because i i, I want to say something one that if if anybody whoever's on here is a salesperson one of the things that you want to know is who's spending the most on product that's coming in or or orders one of the things that we've found is we want to find a way to retarget those customers whether they're on whatever platform or we so Orders that come in that are over a thousand dollars, we get an. We've been able to get Will and his team to spit a, a customized email that goes to our our sales team, and we give it a high value label, so they know, hey, this customer, let's pay more attention here than the one that spent five dollars, and there may be some other things we can uncover about this customer if we go out and you know ask them the questions and you know hey is there something else we can work on with you and so we've built the list that's automatically being generated based on the value the dollar amount of that order whereas as salespeople, you're always trying to fish for information this is bringing it to us without us having to go fish it's being served up on a plate here you go here's a customer that spent twenty five thousand dollars ordering all these headsets or this or that or the other. Um, maybe I should go look into that and see if they have some other needs that are not just what we're selling, if maybe some other services or something or something integrated that we can do with them. Because they're more likely to have more money than the ones that just spent $50. Yep, I, I hear you 100%, um, Chad. I, I think there's, um, there's room, and I've actually considered the idea of an automation directory of sorts um, that we can filter out where, where it, it just lists every possible use case around the different automations that we've built to kind of create that. I, I think there's a real opportunity there uh, to help people see what can be automated. Let, what I tell people when they say, well, what, what should I automate? I, I would say, go figure out how to build your business manually, do it five times. And if it's taking more than 15 minutes a day, more than an hour a week or more than an hour a month, come talk yeah. to me. Because, because if it's, especially if it's in a browser, honestly, even if it's not in a browser, you would be surprised what can be automated today. It's, 
it's shocking actually how much can be automated. You want to also talk about a little bit, I know we're not done with this project, but could give other people a purview into into window into uh, so the, the other softwares that we're pulling information from Cubano, like Celex and yeah. Snap and those repricers. So I think that's that's even higher level than just 100% Cubano because those are other automations that could be um, used using Cubano as well as other other applications. So in this situation specifically, what we discovered is that Rolando had a process where he was taking data out of Scubana and he was pushing that data up into Celex to get the appropriate cost information and over to Seller Snap to do um, a lot of his repricing. And he was trying to kind of get a lot of that going. And he has a very complex way of meshing the data in. And, and we went in and said, okay, well, how much time are you spending on that right now? And we figured out that it was an exorbitant amount of time. And so we figured out a budget that we could handle. And we basically went in and did some spreadsheet magic to create a whole bunch of data feeds to pull it into the right place and get it where, where it was going. This was not like a super clean, yes, right out of the box, there was something there. He had to come to the table and say, well, I'm going to pay you to figure out the problem and the nuts and bolts of what's going on. But he had budget to do that because he knew exactly how much it was really taking. And it evolved. It evolved. We had a really different vision when we started that project. And then as we got through the middle of it, we realized, oh, that first vision needs to be revised in order to make this happen within the budget. Yep. And and it's it's one of those things. Sometimes you have four, three, four, five different apps that you all have you know, um, seven, 10, 20 different tabs going on at the same time. And it would be awesome to take some of that data and pull it down into one area because, you know, you're pulling this from there and this one, this one there and to make decisions. And if we could take some of those where we're always going into and grabbing bits of data, feed it all into one area. And then it doesn't end there because you're taking that data for us and then spitting back whatever new information we're feeding into that combination and sending it back out to the appropriate locations so that we don't have to go back. Oh, I got to go back into that website and add this. I got to upload that. I got to import that. I got to export that. All of that stuff that import export. I, I don't know about people on it. I hate importing exporting. <laughs> I hate when somebody tells me import this export that then you haven't really made it convenient for me to really just use that stuff. Just make it so I could use it. And so Will has been able to uh, take some of our more heavily used apps and Take all How this many, importing, I'm, exporting. I'm curious, out of the Rolando, equation. when you look at importing and exporting, Scubana, Celix, whatever platform you're using, what's your rule of thumb? How how many do you do? You, I mean, we we we've talked fifteen one one before to some degree or another, but but what was your in, what what's been your internal rule for how many exports? How how often do you look at something before you bring it um bring it up and decide okay this is time to get put on the on the platter for automation. So it depends if it's a task that I'm doing versus some some of my team members because my, my my team members' time is all valuable, but we all um, kind of calculate our time at, at being a different worth. So if I'm putting in an hour of something repetitively every day, it's 100% I'm bringing it to you. Whereas if it's a team member, um, we, we look at it a little bit differently. Um, if they're putting in, uh, I, I'll say like $500 worth I think we've calculated that somewhere between four to five hundred dollars worth of their time on a monthly basis, then automating that function is 100 percent going to provide ROI because a lot of things that they're working on are going to be something they're going to be doing for the next year, two, three, four years, as long as we're in business. Right. Mm -hmm. So if it's more than five hundred dollars worth of time, then I'm bringing it back to you and say, hey, well, let's look at this new project. Is it worth doing? And you'll come back to me and. Well, yes. Let's let you know, let's go through the process, and and usually it it's it's worth automating. Or if not, you know, you'll say, hey, look, it's gonna. This is the budget for it. Do you have it? Can we do it? Do you want to move forward? And if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. But that's usually been our rule of thumb. If it's five hundred dollars or more a month of that individual's time of work, then it's a it's something we put on the roadmap time. To, to talk about. Yeah, it's time to put it on the roadmap for automation. Hmm. And so, Will, uh, what what would you say no to? Like, what's 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 in your wheelhouse? Like, if you're taking an inventory of your skill set and your company's skill set, what's completely outside of scope? And you're just absolutely hell no, I'm not going to do this. And 
where is there pieces where you're like, hey, yeah, we can definitely harness our skills and make this work? Like, well, I have to shout out to my team. I mean, the, the team that stands behind me today is amazing. And so I would say nothing. No, we can take out anything. But that's not true. Um, one of the things we've discovered, and this is a tidbit for, tidbit for any business, is you got to productize. You got you to gotta figure out what fits inside your wheelhouse and, and where does it go. So the key things that I would say, it, it's you got to be careful with automation is things that involve a ton of emotion. So, so I tell people, you know, marking a project is done or sending that final invoice. Let's say that you're a, a big B2B distributor, you know, that those 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 situations when you have an emotional attachment to the to the automation that's going on, um, you gotta be really careful with automating those things. You gotta put the right text in there. People don't like to be treated like objects, and the automation's gotta feel personal. And we're at a day and age where that automation can be personal. So it's not about spamming your list. It's not about you know digging into all of those other things that, that, that are there. You've got to be careful with what you're automating so that you are still creating that personal touch uh, for, for the people the people that you're seeing. Cool. Uh, OK, so OK, cool. Uh, so I appreciate that. I do want that directory. We're coming up on the final couple minutes of this webinar. What should I have asked that I didn't ask? I'm going to start with you, Rolando. Everybody that's selling products needs to know how much inventory they have in terms of value. And this is something we've really been trying to hone in this last year. It is important, especially at the end of the year, for tax to have a really good way to determine what that is. I, I remember um, the CPA we had when we started using him a couple of years ago, he says, you need somebody to go into Scubana to make sure everything's accurate all the time because it's going to affect your tax and it will. Whether you're selling $100,000 a year or you're selling 10 million or more, if you, if you buy and sell inventory, you really need to have that down. And luckily for us, Will, uh, his team has made sure that all of those costs, uh, when they come in, are all automated. So we don't have a person anymore literally going through, checking, um, has the price changed from this supplier to that supplier. It's, it's coming in automatically every day. That inventory value gets updated from all of those suppliers. So we don't have to go in and check a website or at the end of the year, scramble to do all of that. And then combined with what Scuban is doing with all of that inventory, we get a much more accurate picture on what inventory looks like. Because uh, I, I heard from, I don't know, I think Kevin King said something like, you know, you live and die by, by your cost of inventory if you're selling products. And so that's something that is, is, a, is a really good nugget to have because you'll find out if maybe we have too much inventory, maybe we don't have enough, maybe we're paying too much or too little, whatever. Inventory is now, king if you're selling products. One of the things you can automate, maybe you can, is personal relationships. So <laughs> I had a VA, a virtual assistant that was in my text messages responding back to my wife. That's a huge no-no, right? Those are things you don't want to be doing. <laughs> Will just muted his line. Uh, and so, but one of the things I think is really important to shout out is like community is really important, right? Learning from other people. This is why we actually have these webinars is that is bringing smart people on, right? And bringing people that are smarter than ourselves and bringing them into a room to share knowledge. So that's going to be a little shout out in the chat box there. If you see Gina's going to be posting something about our run D2C Slack group. We could not be accomplishing what we could be accomplishing. We can't be automating for sure if we actually don't have other people to rely on and learn from. So please check it out, join it. All right, now back to you, Will. What is the something that I didn't ask you that I should have asked that's that's going to be helpful and valuable to those that are dialing in today? You know, you should have asked me whether or not automating text messages to your wife uh, was a good idea before <laughs> you tried that. Uh, because no, I I have so I have a VA and she actually said, "Are you sure you want me to text as you?" And I said, "Actually, you know what? You're right. You should text my wife as you, so she knows it's coming from you." And so my wife and my my assistant actually text back and forth. And so, so like she knows that it's it's because yeah. otherwise, obviously, it gets a little crazy. No, the the thing I was gonna say is wait, real, um, just real quick on that. So, how my wife knew it wasn't me is that she saw an XO XO at the end of the text message, and that was just it. She's like, you don't write to me like that. So, I, I, I am a believer in, in if you don't have a 
an assistant, you are one, right? I'm a huge fan in having an assistant and having leverage. We actually, one of our big nuggets I can share is we try to give different departments in our team virtual assistants to help them get more work done. So some things you just can't automate, like text message your wife, right? Mm -hmm. Or something you just don't want to have, a this just doesn't have a high ROI that you can't automate where you need to just throw manual labor at it. And maybe it's just less expensive labor for those repetitive low value tasks. Mm -hmm. uh, so just wanted to throw that out there. like. People should be looking into having a virtual assistant. If you need help finding one, I'm happy to help you finding one. I have, I have a good friend who runs a, a company that's been helping us source virtual assistants. Just want to throw that out there. Back to you. No, but you're right. But but you're right. Just before you go to Will, you gave you had been pressing me for years to to run with that ball, and we have the last I don't know three years now, or maybe a little over three years now, and I wish I'd have done it sooner. Uh, in terms of bringing in uh, assistants, and now I, you know, we're up to about ten or so, um, and still going um, with with different things. But a hundred percent agreed with you on that. A hundred, hundred, hundred and fifty percent really. Get get a get a team of folks that can take some of those non-automated yeah. tasks um, to 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 offload tasks from your higher um, labor people that are probably U.S. based. Couldn't couldn't agree more on the on the assistant thing. That about a year and a half ago, I jumped on that bandwagon as well. I, I originally started with FreeUp, um, and, and and went through them, and still have uh, so, some FreeUp employees on my team. And I also use another company called Satiated Artists, which we love as well. And they're they're all about finding um, U.S. based artists and teaching them how to be executive assistants, um, and project managers. And they've been fantastic to us. So, I mean, couldn't agree more with the do stay in your lane, do what's right for you. Um, let, so, so you asked me what, what should you have asked, but you didn't ask and, and here's, here's what I would say. If you were looking to instill a culture of automation inside your business, start at the bottom, not the top. Now that may see, seem counterintuitive because you think the top are the people who are paid the most amount of money. And so if I find something that's only taking them an hour, then it's gonna be ROI positive. The reason I say to start at the bottom is because these are the people who are most afraid of automation. And if you create a culture where when you autom automate away someone's job that you just let them go, no one's ever going to raise their hand and say, hey, I think my job could be automated. Like it's just never gonna happen. If you ask Rolando, what he's done with these automations, as soon as we automate something, he, if, 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 now if they're not the right team member, they're not the right team member. But, but we've taken half entire jobs uh, on his team and automated them, and he just shifted them to something else that was, that was generating real value. He understands mm -hmm. what it means to bring in a family and create a family. So if you don't start at the bottom when you're automating, you'll never get anybody to, to, to jump on that bandwagon and you should reward them for bringing up the automation ideas. I mean, it's it's just powerful. So so that's what I would say. When you're automating, start at the very lowest man on the totem pole and work your way up, because those individuals are the ones where you know rubber is meeting the road, feet are on the street, and, and there are automatable tasks. And they'll appreciate you know, once once they see the value. It that's how that stuff you worked on with us. You know they. It took okay, us a little while. All the different, all the different ones that are that that you created tools and tasks and made it made it much faster. They all appreciate at the end of the day now that they can get their job done much more quickly, uh, and it's a lot less frustrating. So they actually enjoy doing their job more than oh, I gotta. I'm gonna type. Oh, I'm, I'm remembering. I'm remembering when we jumped right? into that FBA. The FBA automations. I, I remember uh, Rolanda's VA who was working on it. She was like, "No, I can do it faster manually. No, I can do it faster <laughs> manually." It took us like three different phone calls before, and, and it was actually interesting. The first version of the spreadsheet that we built, the first version of the application that we built that automates those processes, it wasn't doing it. And she was right. It was faster to her for her to do it manually. So we had to create mm -hmm. a version two, and that was about break even. And then version three, she was like, "Okay, I'm done doing this manually. This is way right. faster." But but the idea of, I mean, we were telling her go to this report, download this, put it there. She was like, "That takes me 20 minutes before I can even get started. I could have been done with five products." And so it wasn't until we got to V3 of the spreadsheet that she was like, "Oh, I am done doing this manually." So just, oh, yeah. I, I don't know. Don't give up. Um, and start at the bottom of the totem pole. Uh, I think Drake said it best, right? Started from the bottom and now we're here, no? All yeah. right. <laughs> so, 
All right. So uh, just finally, I just want to understand or want the people on the call to understand where, how can they reach you? And if there's anything yep. else you want to share uh, that take away value, that would be great. And we're going to wrap it up on this automation webinar. Um, well, so I'll, I'll start there. Will at dataautomation.com is my email. Um, if you mention this webinar, um, we'll jump on a, a free 30 minute consult. We generally charge 350 an hour for that. There could be a little bit of a waiting list to get there. Um, but, but we will give you a, a, a free bonus time to, to get in there and chat. Um, and obviously we're here for you. We're, we're excited to, to help in the automation, um, strategies what, that are out there. And if you want to reach me, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn, Rolando Rosas. Uh, our website is Global Tech Worldwide. Um, I guess you could also, we have a really nifty uh, URL, helpmyheadset.com. So if you're thinking about, uh, if you're working from home uh, or you have employees that are working from home and you want an evaluation of what they need um, devices wise, whether it's headsets like we all have on, on our head um, or other devices, we do that. Uh, and we're also, um, expanding that to provide businesses. Uh, so if you're using Microsoft team services like Teams or Zoom, um, or you need uh, enhanced uh, internet connectivity to your business, that's something that we can we can discuss and uh, we can do that at no charge for those that are on, on this call. We can uh, evaluate that for you. That's awesome. And to reach me, uh, my personal email is chat at Stubana. Uh, one way you can have direct access to those that are even on the webinar or those that are dropping knowledge is that run D2C Slack that I shared or that Gina shared in the in the chat box here. But please feel free to join and collaborate and learn and grow. Thank you, everyone, so much. Thank you, Rolando and Will, for joining. Thank you, and have Thank a great you. day. Enjoy. Thanks, all.